So I will start with the introduction, what carbon nanotube hybrid material is, then I will go into the synthesis process of this material. Then we will look for some properties of this material and the application where this is applicable to and the safety concerns about this material and manufacturing obstacles and at last conclusion. So decades of extensive research have been done on carbon nanotubes due to their excellent physical, electrical and other properties. The CNT sheet is modified to form a carbon nanotube hybrid material by incorporating metal, ceramic or other types of nanoparticles in the high, into the high temperature synthesis process to improve and customize the properties of the traditional nanotube sheet. The floating catalyst case pyrolysis method is used for the synthesis of this hybrid material. This method can produce industrial scale of CNT sheet directly by binding a sock of nanotubes onto a drum. This is a one-step continuous process which can produce evenly distributed high quality of carbon nanotubes of nearly 10 nanometer diameter. CNT sheet properties and performance depends on the customization of the CNT sheet, not just the intrinsic properties of the carbon nanotube. CNT customization can include modifying the breathability, modifying the other properties of the CNT sheet by integrating different types of nanoparticles into the synthesis process. So the first figure, the first image is for the floating catalyst reactor, which we are using in our UC NanoVolt lab. When running the reactor, the temperature of the furnace in the heating zone is around 1400 degrees centigrade. There are three zones along the length of the reactor tube. First is the inlet zone. Second, middle one is the hot zone, where the temperature is around 1400 degrees centigrade. And the third and the last one is the cooling zone or outlet. The length of each zone is about 8 inches. Fuel is injected into the reactor by a series pump that feeds into the fuel injector, which consists of an ultrasonic atomizer and mixer, where the fuel is mixed with the carrier gases. As we can see in the figure, there is a fuel injector and there is an atomizer. So fuel will be injected through that, fuel will be injected through that part, and the atomizer will mix this fuel with the carrier gases. And if we want to integrate nanoparticles in our CNT synthesis, then this is the particle injector. This is customizable. So you can customize this according to your uh, particles, what you want to inject and at what temperature you want to inject. So as the fuel enters the atomizer, it is broken into the droplets that are micron size. Gases are among various variables that determine the state of the sock. The process must be carefully tuned to prevent breaking of the sock. In the first part of the reactor, catalyst nucleates from Armstrong iron atoms under diffusion and agglomerate. The CNT growth region locates in the middle part of the furnace, which is mainly the high temperature zone. In this growth zone, the hydrocarbon decomposes into free carbon atoms, which combine into a catalyst to produce CNTs. So the basic process is, First, the iron will decompose into small nanoparticles. Then these nanoparticles start to collide to form a bigger particle size. Then the sulfur will decompose, theophane, and the coating of sulfur on those nanoparticles will take place. In the growth zone, the CNT will grow, and after the sock, is aerosol sock of CNT will be collected on a rotating dome. Here is a video which can show the process. So in this, a sock is coming out of the outlet, the third zone of the reactor, and it is collecting on the rotating drum. So by collecting it on the rotating drum, we can make a CNT sheet out of this CNT aerosol sock. And you can customize this process. There are so many variations. You can vary the synthesis temperature. You can vary the carrier gas flow. You can vary the binding speed of this drum just to customize the product which you want. Here are some images for the carbon nanotube hybrid material. So first two images are for the tissue CNT. Next two are for the carbon fiber CNT cylinders. As we can see in the last image, the thickness of the material is around 10 micrometer. Usually we have materials with 10 micrometer to 20 micrometer thickness. You can vary the thickness of the material. Again, it is a customizable material. So you can vary the process and you can get the achievable result, whatever specific applications you are targeting. According to that, you can just synthesize your material. 
So, in the first image, as we can see, the sock is coming out of the outlet or the end of the reactor and it is collecting on the rotating drum. If we see this sock on micrometer scale in SEM images, we can see that nanotubes are not tightly packed and they are not fully oriented. But this structure presents so many gaps and vacancies which can use to capture and filter contaminants. And if we can see the right image, which is nanometer scale, a TEM image of the fabric, we can see that this CNT material is mainly consists of multi-wall carbon nanotubes. And an individual nanotube is diameter is about seven nanometer. And we also see that a catalyst impurities are trapped inside the nanotubes. This is a SEM image of carbon nanotube hybrid material. In this, we integrated silver, zinc and granulated activated carbon nanoparticles inside the CNT sheet. All those is, uh, nanoparticles were integrated during the synthesis process. If we can take a closer look, we can see the integration of the particles with the nanotube sheet. And if we go more on micrometer range, then we can see CNT sheet is still, even we integrated nanoparticles in it, it's still it has vacancies which we can use for the filtering application or to capture the virus or other contaminants. To confirm the presence of uh, nanoparticles in our hybrid material, we did EDX analysis. The graph from the EDX analysis confirmed that we have silver, zinc and carbon present in the material. This is Raman spectroscopy. The double resonance D band around 1350 cm inverse is, indu is induced by disorders such as crystal defects, amorphous carbon. In the D band, the broad feature comes from amorphous carbon and the sharper features come from defective CNTs. The second peak, G band is associated with the vibrations which are tangential to the tube surface. The intensity and width of the G and T bands are characteristic indicators of quality and purity for the carbon sp2 structure. A smaller D peak indicates fewer defects and no D peak indicates high crystallinity. It is expected that if we are adding nanoparticles in the carbon nanotube sheet, then it will integrate with the carbon nanotubes. The particles will make a bond with carbon nanotubes and the sp2 bond will break and convert into sp3 bond. So it is expected that that this G by D ratio will decrease if we increase, if we integrate the nanoparticles in this sheet. So as synthesized CNTs, it has so many uh, metal impurities in it as we've see in the previous slide in TEM image that the catalyst impurities were just uh, inside the nanotube. So to get rid of these impurities, generally we do some post-processing like a heat treatment or acid treatment. So if we can see the first image of our hybrid material, which is CNTCU before the heat treatment, before the post-processing, we can see there are so many agglomeration on the CNT sheet. So when we treated this CNTCU sheet at 600 degrees centigrade, it showed that we got rid of few remove, few metal impurities and the, there is a disappearance of agglomerated material from the surface of the CNT sheet. And when we heated the CNTCU sheet at 900 degrees centigrade, it removed more catalytic impurity and more there is a more disappearance of agglomerated material from the CNT sheet. So if uh, it is advisable, if your CNT as synthesized CNT sheet has some metal impurities and if you wanna improve the properties, we can go for the post treatment such as heat treatment, such as acid treatment. So for mechanical strength, magnetic properties of the samples were tested using Instron machine. More than 10 samples were tested. As from the result, we can see that from the hybrid material, which is CNT-CU, we are getting better result as compared to our pristine CNT. The lower strength of the samples may be attributed to the defects introduced in cutting the samples for test because it is lower as the other literature reported. But uh, we are expecting that the strength of the as synthesized sheet without any cutting, it should be around 0.2 gigapascal. The electrical properties of the samples were tested using four-point probe method. 
samples were cut into one into one inch size and measured at different position then the average values was calculated. The thickness of the samples were measured by micrometer and they were around 10 to 20 micrometer thickness. And that conductivity shows a, the conductivity show of the material is dependent on the temperature. As we can see in the graph, the pristine conductivity and the hybrid copper CNT and CU conductivity is at different annealed temperature because we try to get rid of the imp catalyst impurities. So we treated these on different temperatures so on 300, 600 and 900. So we check the conductivity of these materials. As we can see, we are getting better conductivity with the hybrid material, which is CNT-CU. But these materials are following the same trend. Like when we are increasing the temperature, the conductivity is increasing till 600 degrees centigrade. So we are getting maximum conductivity at 600 degrees centigrade. After that, if we are increasing the temperature, the conductivity is going down. The reason for that might be that the CNT sheet is behaving semiconducting when you are when we are increasing temperature it is 600 degrees centigrade and after 600 degrees centigrade it is behaving in a metallic way so that conductivity is going down the other reason might be the CNT film consists of many junctions of nanotubes which can induce contact barrier potential and interrupt the electrons flow and reduce the conductivity so now what our goal is we are working with the CNT hybrid material to form a face mask. The main reason for using this material to form a face mask is that as we already as we already seen in the previous slides, this CNT material has so many vacancies and it is a, it has porous structure which can be used to capture and filter virus. So the main aim is to make if so the main aim is to make to use this. Um, uh, to use this porous structure and use in, it in a filtering application. So the, the image B and C, we have introduced CNT layer inside the N95 mask and uh, as the figure D suggests that the uh, virus is about the same range, it is in the same size as we are integrating the nanoparticles inside the CNT sheet. So it can capture our CNT sheet can capture this range of virus into the CNT sheet and uh, as the literature suggested that uh, silver and zinc are antiviral nanoparticles and they have very good result with these uh, virus capturing and deactivation so we the the aim here is to integrate silver and zinc nanoparticle into our CNT hybrid sheet and make a CNT face mask with that So this is the preliminary data result which we got from our samples. We tested four samples, samples with uh, CNT layer and cotton non-woven and polypropylene non-woven layers outside of CNT. So in the first graph, we see that collection efficiency of the fourth sample is around 50%, but the rest of the samples are not as good. Even the 50% is not good. And the pressure drop of these samples are also high. With sample one and two, we are getting uh, nearly better pressure drop as compared to the four and six, but it still it is not in the range of the OSHA. So the problem with these samples to get high pressure drop and lower collection efficiency, the main reason is the CNT is not breathable as we expected. So we need to make our CNT more breathable so that it can let the air pass through it. Other, the other reason might be the filters which we made earlier, they were very thin. So there is not enough residence time for those penetrating particles, which is affecting the diffusion, diffusional deposition mechanism. That's why we are getting the, that's why we are getting the collection efficiency below 50%. So we are trying to make our CNT more breathable now and we will make some changes to our CNT material so that it can capture data and the pressure drop will be lower than 10 and the collection efficiency will go up. 
So other applications for carbon nanotube hybrid fabric includes uh, flame retardant apparel, filtration, heat resistance, and antimicrobial fabric. So UC Nanovolt is working with UC DAP with uh, Professor Ashley Kobe to work in this area because CNT is customizable material. So according to the application, you can integrate that specific nanoparticles into your CNT sheet. And also you can vary the thickness of the CNT sheet. You can vary the growth time. You can vary the thickness. You can vary other temperature and other carrier flow parameters also, just to get the material which is useful for the particular application. So for the safety of CNT sheet, a personal ultrafine particle counter is used and the potential release of uh, airborne nanomaterials from the surface of the CNT sheets were measured. The two samples were tested. The first sample was a CNT sheet with pristine with no nanoparticles in it. And the next, the CNT sheet two was with granulated activated carbon, which was in micrometer range. So, These two types of sheets were rubbed and flexed using hands and the gloves to monitor the release of nanomaterials. The concentration of the glove box was measured before rubbing these uh, CNT sheets and the concentration of the glove box was measured during rubbing and flexing of these sheets. From the result, we found that the, from pristine sheet 1, it was no noticeable nanomaterial release. We did not uh, detect any release from the nanomaterial. And but from sheet two, it was observed that there were non-reactive particles like carbon can be released from the sheet. So it is advised that a pristine cover sheet can be used to prevent the particle release. So there are lots of manufacturing obstacles in synthesis process, such as microscale CNTs are expensive to produce as the yield of the CNT process is low. If you want to assemble individual CNT into large size fabric, it is complicated and it is expensive. Presently in our lab, we are working with 1x4 and 3x8 in a diameter extended tubes, which can produce 7.5 gram of CNT sheet per day. Larger reactors are needed to increase the production and reduce the cost. After, along with these, optimum synthesis conditions are also needed. Conditions such as synthesis temperature, conditions such as carrier gas flow, flow composition, glove box pressure, all these, all these parameters can affect the soap condition and also affect the CNT soap properties. So in conclusion, carbon nanotube hybrid material is a new development. It's a new hybrid material, one step continuous synthesis process. There are a wide range of application where this material is applicable. This material can be customized according to the applications. There are certain drawbacks of this material also because right now we don't have those large reactors. So the production is very small and that's why the cost is high. But if we can work on the larger reactor, then the, this will go down. The cost, cost will go down. We can make produce more. We can produce more CNT material with that. Along with that, to go overcome these barriers, the need for the development of a larger reactor, as I discussed before, improving the synthesis process because there are lots of variables here in the synthesis process, and a single variation can change the entire result. If the glove box temperature, if the glove box pressure is not as we expected, then the results are not repeatable because every time you will get a new CNT material and the properties will be different because there are so many variables. So a need to optimize this synthesis process is really required. And the science behind the CNT growth and nucleation is important. Thank you so much for your time.